guys, it's Steve with the Music Store. Ever wonder why a bridge is so expensive? What I want to do right now is show you real quickly what the steps are in order to replace a bridge. I've already got this one started to be prepped, but I'm going to show you each of the steps through the process so you get kind of an understanding of what goes into fitting a bridge to your instrument, what we're looking for, and why it's so darn expensive. So of course the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to drop the old bridge out and remove the strings. So we have all of this out of our way. And on this cello, I'm just going to take the tailpiece completely off and set it aside and move our strings out of the way as well. So now we've got an, an exposed area. And for, to protect the finish of the instrument, we're going to use this blue tape and lay it out just like so. That way we don't damage any of the finish of the instrument. The next thing we want to do is we want to take the new bridge and we're going to fit it to the curvature of the instrument. So the top of your instrument is curved a little bit like this and we want to make sure that the feet are cut exactly to it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the new bridge. You notice how the feet are really blocky here, how the bridge itself is still really thick up here. We haven't done any of the shaping back on the bridge yet. How all the wings are still real square cut on it. We haven't done any of that shaping. This is just a raw uh, uncut bridge. And when we place it on the instrument, you'll notice how it actually wants to teeter back and forth because the feet right here aren't actually cut to the curvature of the body. So that's the first thing we want to do. So what we do is we set it in place off of the F fulls, notches, and we take our uh, pencil, and after we've determined how much material we want to cut off, which I've already done, we come in and mark the back of our feet. That's too much. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the curvature of the instrument and marking the pencil line on the feet, if you can see that. Okay, because I'm lazy, what I just did is I went in with a bandsaw and I cut the majority of the material off of the bottom of the feet. And what I'm going to do now is use this rig here to help hold my bridge as we go to sand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the height or the angle, I guess. I want this bridge to be perpendicular to the top. So I'm going to make sure that the back side of it is standing up perfectly up and down. And then lock it into this jig. Now I'm ready to sand the feet. Okay, so we have some sandpaper now installed onto the top. We've got our bridge perpendicular in the jig. And what the technician gets to do at this point is sand. Or we're literally going to move this thing back and forth until those feet are sanded perfectly to the curvature of this of this instrument. Here we go. Yeah, this is not the exciting part. So what we've done is we've sanded the feet out. Um, you can see all of our sawdust from it. And the feet are now matching the curvature of the top perfectly. So what we're going to do is get rid of that guy. Put this back in the right position. We're going to make sure that it's lined up right with the fingerboard where we want to. Then we're going to mark the string height by taking our straight edge along the fingerboard so we can know what our strings are going to be doing. We're going to come up and mark by literally making an, an indentation into the bridge where that string is going to come off and where that string is going to come off. The next thing we'll do is we'll measure up uh, from there so we can get the proper string height uh, in order to cut the top of the bridge next. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our two marks, one here and one here. I've kind of marked them in pencil so you make it a little bit easier to see. And then what we've done is we've taken our calibers and measured out exactly the string height that we want for our string to come up. And we're going to measure that point out. So we're going to take it from up that high and then mark by pushing that into our bridge exactly where it's at. And I'm going to do the exact same thing 
uh, on this side the measurement is just a little bit different and then we're going to show what the angle is at the top. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we've marked both of our heights. We've measured up from the first mark from the fingerboard up to there and now we've got our model. So this is uh, the shape that we want our bridge to be in. So it's just a little model that we're going to use to trace. I'm going to lay these up on both sides of our marks here. Just like so. And then we're going to simply trace our pattern. onto our bridge. So we know where we want it to go. Now from here what we're going to do is we're going to use some files and actually file this material off of the bridge to get us the right shape that we want. Okay, so after we've got it rough cut out with a large file, we're going to go down to a much smaller file and try to really get our, our detail work it down um, on, on the bridge now. Right now we're about 10 minutes into filing on this bridge. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to set the string spacing um, using our little tool here. And so we've got it set to the full size uh, cello that we've got. We're going to find kind of dead center on it. And we're going to, it's hard to do this on camera. Mark our bridge heights, or our string width, I mean. Now we have some small indentations here, and then we'll use some hand files to actually cut those indentations in um, just a little bit deeper for the strings. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've fit the, fit the feet. We have measured off the fingerboard to our heights. We have measured up the, the bridge to set our string heights and we've shaped the top of this as well off of the model that we used. The next thing we're doing is we've got it set up back on the instrument with just the first and fourth strings on. And we actually want to measure now at the fingerboard if our heights are right. So again we're going back to our calibers. We've got our caliber distance set. I'm going to come in here underneath the first string and we're right there. That's exactly where we want it to be. We're going to do the exact same measurement on the, on the other side to see if we're set there. If we're off, what we'll do is we'll take the bridge down and we'll continue to cut these down into the right height because we always try to leave it long so we can cut into it. Um, so we'll drop the bridge, set it back up, drop the bridge, set it back up and keep cutting it down until we get these string heights exactly right. So if we do need to recut our uh, bridge, what we do is we use this jig right here, slide him in back behind and must have used him on a much smaller bridge. He's way up. We lift him up and it's called a string jack because we jack our strings up out of our way and now our bridge is free. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is measure the thickness at our feet and the thickness at the top of the strings. So again I've got my caliber set to the thickness of the strings and we're going to simply score this distance into the back of our feet. What I'm doing is I'm leaving a faint line in the bottom of the uh, faint line in the bottom of the feet here, so that we can actually start to carve this extra material and thickness off the bridge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing with a different thickness at the top. Again, measure with the calibers and mark it. And then we're going to start the, uh, the beveling or the French facing. Alright, so what we've done is we've gone through and measured the thickness of the feet and the top. And we have those marked in. Next I'm going to use my plane here. And we're going to start thinning that material off. After I'm done with the plane, we'll go back in with the file to really make those thicknesses exactly what it is. Now the distance at the feet is thicker than it is at the top. So we're going to end up taking more material out up here than we do down here. slowly taking the bridge down. Once we got the 
thinning done with the plane, we're going to go back to our file and finish it off by hand. Finally, we'll go back to our really thin file and do the, the finished texture on it. We want it really, really nice and smooth. All right, now what we've done is we've taken the bridge to be the equidistance from the bottom to the top. And you can see how we've taken it where it's thick down here and much thinner up here. And we've put that beveling and shaping into the instrument. The next thing that we have to do is what's called tuning. And at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these wings down and make, uh, and you basically make sure that there's less material in the bridge. The, less the least amount of material in the bridge is going to allow the strings and the vibration of the strings to travel through the bridge the best. So where we can, we're going to take some material off, which is going to be in here, a little bit in underneath the archway here, and perhaps a little bit in the heart. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the points to come down pretty equidistant. Um, so it looks good and functions the exact same way. Just like that. The last thing that, when, that we want to talk about is on better quality instruments, we want to do some additional tuning. And on additional tuning, what we're going to do is we're going to take another blade and carve out certain areas of the bridge in order to enhance certain sound qualities. If we want it to sound a little bit brighter or darker, enhance uh, the, the lower two strings versus the upper two strings, we're going to do a couple different carvings on the bridge in order to bring those sorts of sounds out. We normally only do that on high-end uh, instruments and bridges instead of the student level stuff, but it does make a significant difference in the sound. Okay, this is the final bridge installed. You'll notice how the feet fit exactly against the body of the instrument, how the strings are really equal distance, and that with the, the curvature of the bridge is such that it's really easy to bow on each individual string. Um, we've cut our notches in the bridge to make sure that, that as they come, they are turning at the right angle, coming back to the tailpiece. Um, and then we've got our shaping on the bridge and our tuning on the bridge to make sure that the instrument sounds as best as it possibly can. Now the fun part is to, uh, to play it. All right, so now you've seen all the different steps that go into making a cello bridge. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of better appreciation of what's really involved in this and why cutting a bridge can be so expensive. When it's done right, it makes the playing your instrument so much easier. When it's done poorly, it can be very difficult to play the instrument, and your instrument's not going to sound very good. So those are some of the things uh, that go into the bridge. If you have any other questions or want to learn more, come on into the music store and we'll show you.